Currently, when we have any kind of problem with the validation of inputs, we are having an unexpected behavior. For example, if we try to create a user without sending any kind of value, we are obtaining this specific response. Basically, what's happening here is that Laravel, when it has any validation problem, try to return the user to the previous location, causing a not found HTTP exception in our case. So what we are going to do is to modify this behavior directly. So for this, let's go to our code and in the exceptions handler, directly located in the exceptions folder in the handler file, we have a render method. The render method is executed every time that an exception is thrown. And the report method is executed every time again, but in this case, only to report in the log file the exceptions. So what we are going to do is to modify the render method. As you can see, currently it is calling the render method from the parent class. If we go to this definition, pressing alt click, we can see that specifically for the validation exceptions, we have a method called convert validation exception to response. And if we check this method, we can see that it is returning a JSON response if it expects a JSON, or in other case, it's returning a redirect back with the inputs. So what we are going to do is to redefine this method. So just copy this. paste it here, and what we are going to do is to modify this method to return the errors as a JSON response independently if it is requesting JSON or not. So you are maybe asking to yourself, why are we using again JSON? We should be able to use here the error response method and you are completely right. That is the main reason to define a trait instead of use a base controller with other possible responses. In this way we are able to use the responses in the trait directly in whatever class or file that we need. Remember to import and now we are able to return the error response. Now we need to import the definition of validation exception. Please use the illuminate validation exception. And we need to add a conditional here. Why we need to do this? Well, basically because at some point we don't want that the render method from the parent handler take care of every possible exception that we have. We are going to control or handle every possible exception that we need to control and in other case, return an unexpected exception. If we don't do this in this way, it's going to be a little complicated to define where to use the parent render and when not, because basically the parent render is going to specify a lot of details that we really don't want to share with the client or the user. So basically we need to add a condition asking if the exception is an instance of validation exception. In case of yes, we just need to call the convert validation exception to response sending the respective exception and the request. So after this, if we try to check, we can see that we are obtaining a JSON response specifying inside the error what kind of problems we have. In this case, that the name, the email, and the password are required. So we are done now with the validation exceptions and we can continue in the next class with other exceptions. See you there.